So in the last video, we give a brief overview of the hydrogen atom, of a somewhat naive model of the hydrogen atom, in which uh, semi-classically we have a proton in the nucleus, and we have uh, an electron orbiting, uh, so to speak, around this proton. And the only terms that we're taking into account were the kinetic energy of the electron and the Coulomb interaction between the proton and the electron. For this, you can find a solution for the time independent Schrodinger equation for which the stationary states, which we're now going to denote by ket nl ml, satisfy the usual eigenvalue equation. Here, these are the quantum numbers that you need to specify to fully describe the state of, of the electron. Technically speaking, there is uh, another one to describe the spin, uh, but we won't include that at the moment. Here, the energy levels of this Hamiltonian are typically written as minus 13.6 electron volts over this principal quantum number. And the fundamental scale of the hydrogen atom and of atomic physics in general is the Bohr radius, which uh, takes on this expression here, Me is the mass of the electron, E is the charge of the electron, H bar is the reduced Planck constant. And this is equal to about 0 0.529 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Using the Bohr radius, we can, we can re-express the allowed energy levels of the electrons as h bar square to me a naught square one over n squared. And this will be useful to us uh, in a moment. So in the last video, we also described that what's actually experimentally observed uh, deviates a little bit from this, the energy spectrum predicted by this equation. There are small deviations, both qualitative and quantitative. Uh, so there, what that points to is uh, missing contributions to this Hamiltonian in our model of the hydrogen atom. And to set a scale for the types of energies that are going to be relevant to us, uh, we're going to introduce a constant uh, a dimensionless constant. And this is how it was historically introduced, even though it was for a semi-classical model of the hydrogen atom, but it does appear in other places. So this constant is going to be the ratio of the speed of the electron in uh, the first orbit of the hydrogen atom divided by the speed of light. And this is going to give us a measure of how important relativistic effects are. If the speed of the electron is very close to the speed of light, then we expect relativistic effects to have a very strong influence. If it's not, then it'll have a small or negligible difference. And we'll denote the speed by VE over C. Again, using a semi-classical model where the electrons actually follow specific orbits around the proton, uh, particular uh, circular orbits, you can find that the, you can estimate that the speed of the electron at the lowest energy level takes on the following value. So the reduced Planck constant, the mass of the electron and the Bohr radius. This makes our constant equal to this, which curiously takes on a value that's very close to one over 137. 
And this is known as the fine structure constant. And we're going to use it again as a measure of how important relativistic effects are. You can already, already start to see that according to this, relativistic effects are uh, fairly small in this problem. So we're going to re-express the energy levels of the unperturbed Hamiltonian, which we have written down like this, in terms of the fine structure constant. And this is where this re-expression becomes useful. Uh, we can also write this as the fine structure constant squared, mc squared over two times one over n squared. And what this tells you now is that the energy scales of the hydrogen spectrum are, are much smaller than the rest energy of the electron, mc squared. So this suggests then that relativistic effects are very small in this problem. Uh, so the energy scales are much smaller than the rest mass. So relativistic effects should be negligible. And this is why we were able to use the Schrodinger equation to get a, a fairly accurate picture of the spectrum of hydrogen. If you want this another way, maybe in a more familiar uh, setting, you can also estimate that the momentum of the electron scales as alpha mc, or if you prefer m times alpha c, where this is the speed of the electron. Uh, this then suggests that the velocity or the speed of the electron is two orders of magnitude smaller than the speed of light, which further reinforces the fact that relativistic effects should be small. However, it's going to turn out that even though these effects are very small, we can't completely ignore them. The source of the discrepancies between the spectrum predicted by our initial Hamiltonian and the fine structure actually comes from relativistic effects. And uh, we'll list them here. And then the following videos, we'll go through each one of them and look at their contributions. So the first correction is going to be a relativistic correction to the kinetic energy of the electron. The second correction is going to be what we'll call spin orbit interaction. And this again has to do with uh, the fact that the electron is actually spinning as well as moving in the electric field of the proton, which will create a coupling between its spin degree of freedom and its orbital degree of freedom. And there's one final effect that's sometimes called the Sierpewegung of the electron. Uh, this is a, a jittery motion of the electron. Uh, it shakes very quickly so that it's actually not a point particle, but it actually takes on a, some non-locality from this vibration. So this is a jittery motion of the electron. So over the next few videos, we'll go through each one of these. Uh, these two in some detail, and this one will uh, skim over a bit more uh, quickly, and then bring all those contributions together to correct for this observed discrepancy in the spectrum of the hydrogen atom.